Hey, what's up guys? This is Nine Lives coming at you with another video. And today's video is an extension of my previous video called Call of Duty World War II Battle Royale. If you missed it, I'll put the link in the top right corner of the screen and you can check it out after this video is done. If you click the eye icon in the top right corner, it'll open up in a new tab and you can watch it afterwards. In that video, one of the things that I mentioned is the fact that there's these two NPCs here blocking the entrance to this path. And I was wondering, could this be the entrance to a secret new game mode that Sledgehammer Games has planned for some point in the future. Well, I learned how to get outside of the headquarters, so let's see what's out there. So again, I really do recommend checking out my previous video after this one about Call of Duty World War II Battle Royale, just so you can get a more complete picture. But just to get you up to speed really quick, I think there's a pretty decent chance that Call of Duty is gonna be getting Battle Royale at some point in the near future. Kind of like how there's an entrance to the zombies game mode in the headquarters, but instead there'll be this entrance to Battle Royale that I just went through. Now, some of you guys might not think that Call of Duty would put out a big game mode like that without releasing it as a separate game, but here's the thing. PUBG, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, is coming to consoles mid-December. Fortnite is already on consoles, so Call of Duty has some serious competition because both of those games are more popular than Call of Duty right now. The video game developer Raven Software, who's worked on a bunch of Call of Duty titles since Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, they helped Infinity Ward with that, they've worked with Treyarch, they've worked with Sledgehammer Games, they just released released a battle royale game for the Chinese market with Call of Duty Online, an exclusive Chinese Call of Duty game. Right now, only 3,000 players have access to it because it's in a very early testing phase and they're going to open it up to more players in mid-December. I have gameplay of this new Call of Duty battle royale game mode in my previous video, so again, make sure you check it out. Raven Software, the developers who've just put together this Call of Duty battle royale for the Chinese market, are the same developers who made Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and the same developers who made the war maps for Call of Duty World War II. Now, it seems a little bit weird to me that Raven Software has had such huge roles with previous Call of Duty games. A lot of times they do a lot of work, but all I've heard of them doing for Call of Duty World War II is making the war maps. Last year, they made the entirety of Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. That's a full game with DLC and everything. So to me, it seems like there's a lot of potential that maybe they've been keeping this under wraps, but they've been working on a battle royale game mode for Call of Duty World War II. A couple other things that have been on my mind is the fact that Activision released a teaser trailer for DLC 1 before Call of Duty World War 2 was even released. They released a teaser trailer before the release of the game for DLC 1. That's really weird, not something they would usually do. What's going on? Why is a schedule like that for releasing trailers on DLC? Also, I believe they marked down Call of Duty World War 2 in stores more so than they usually would ever do on Call of Duty games for Black Friday. Now, I'm in Canada. We don't really do the whole Black Friday thing to the same extent that you guys do in America. America. But what I've heard on Twitter is that the price of Call of Duty World War II has been a lot lower than usual. And by the way, I'm calling in some kill streaks here just so you can see that uh, you can actually bring up a map, you can call in a UAV, you can you can do a whole bunch of stuff when you're outside of the headquarters here. So. Black Friday having markdowns that are more so than what you'd usually see in previous years for Call of Duty World War II, while it's one of the best selling Call of Duty games in recent years, Activision was reporting that Call of Duty World War II did way better for launch sales than Call of Duty Infinite Warfare did. So it's kind of weird that they would mark it down on Black Friday more so than usual because I believe the, the publishers of the games like Activision have quite a bit of influence on what the prices would get marked down to. So it seems like Activision's acting a little bit weird this year, and I know a lot of the Call of Duty community has been talking about how Call of Duty World War II feels kind of unpolished. It doesn't quite feel like they spent you know, a solid three years working on this game. Why does this game have as many bugs and glitches as it does? Did they maybe decide like late into the development cycle that they wanted to try and have Battle Royale as soon as they could, maybe not right at launch, but maybe a few months after that things like the amount of maps in the game had to be sacrificed or maybe like some of the polish and some of the bug fixes towards the end had to go out the window in favor of making sure that they could get Battle Royale out. Because again, this is a super tight timeline. PUBG propped up overnight in the shooter genre of 
of video games where the throne had always belonged to Call of Duty is now this huge juggernaut that's coming to consoles in mid-December and it's absolutely dominating on PC right now. Same thing with Fortnite, same thing with the OG H1Z1. Honestly, I think there's some risk that COD could lose relevancy in the shooter genre if they don't adapt and include Battle Royale as a game mode similar to Zombies. Now, here's the really beautiful thing. Fortnite is free to play. You can download it for free, start playing it right now. PUBG is not a full priced game. Maybe that's why Call of Duty was cheaper on Black Friday this year than we're used to seeing with previous Call of Duty games, even though Call of Duty World War II sold really well. I also think to some extent, they're gonna be forced to be pro-consumer with this. And what I mean by pro-consumer is not ram microtransactions down everybody's throat. They're not gonna be able to do unbalanced microtransactions that give competitive advantages based on like a pay to win system because they're not the biggest player in the space right now. That is the beautiful thing because that's when we start to see pro-consumer decisions from publishers because they don't have full control of the genre. Now, in my previous video, some people were leaving comments saying, how could they manage having 100 players in a lobby? Or how could they manage having even 48, which is how many we have in the headquarters? We have 48 players in the headquarters, but uh, of course there's been some issues with the headquarters. So even though there's 48 players there, you know, is that gonna work for actual multiplayer, let alone 100 players or, or however many we'd want for Battle Royale? And so I don't really know too much about servers, no more than the next guy, but here's my thoughts on it. If they're gonna have huge lobbies with 100 players or even just 48 players, maybe they'll go crazy and do 200 players, I would assume they'd need to get better servers. And a lot of people have been citing that as the reason why Battle Royale wouldn't work in Call of Duty World War II. They'll say, you know, the servers in World War II are absolute trash, they can't even keep the headquarters going, they can't keep, you know, the games from disconnecting at the end. And well, I can definitely understand the frustration with all that, it's kind of ridiculous that a AAA game is having so many server issues, but do you really think Activision is gonna let servers be the roadblock that prevents them from competing in the battle royale shooter genre? Because I really don't think that's likely. There's too much potential there for them to let it go just because of the server thing. So perhaps they've signed some sort of lesser agreement for servers, like some sort of lesser contract for less bandwidth or lower quality servers, just until they're ready to release battle royale. And then they're gonna bring out the big guns, big servers that allow a lot of people on because you know, I think it's just a money thing. It just costs more money to get better servers, right? I really can't think of any other reason why there'd be so many server issues with World War II right now compared to previous Call of Duty games. The previous Call of Duty games never really had these type of server issues. Now, of course, this is just speculation, but again, do you really think Activision would let this massive opportunity slip through their fingers just because of server issues? I think that'd be highly unlikely. And again, this is a massive opportunity for Call of Duty and Activision. I think that if they're able to play their cards right, this is gonna be the most popular Call of Duty game maybe ever. And if you guys are not aware, Call of Duty has been on a decline in terms of sales for a very long time. I believe Modern Warfare 3 was the peak for sales in the Call of Duty franchise. So I think that this is the most potential there's been to have you know a lot of life breathed into the Call of Duty series in a long time. If you haven't been keeping up with Fortnite and PUBG, let me tell you, I think there's a real opportunity for Call of Duty to swoop in and get a lot of market share here because PUBG has a really big optimization problem. You need a pretty good gaming PC in order to run PUBG. It's coming to consoles next month in mid-December, but I don't think it's gonna run very well. PUBG runs so rough on PC that I think the experience is not gonna transfer over to consoles very well. Now, Fortnite is a lot better optimized, but Fortnite does not offer a first person perspective. So PUBG, you can play first person, just like a first person shooter, like you're seeing here in Call of Duty, like what you always play in Call of Duty, but Fortnite only does third person. So they're missing out on a lot of the market. The competitive side of Battle Royale games is all first person. You can't really play competitively very well in third person because people can peek you around corners without being exposed to you and it just doesn't work really well. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for COD here because it's better optimized. It runs at 60 FPS on consoles. It's extremely fluid and smooth. And these are things that I think PUBG is gonna really struggle with next month when it comes to consoles. And again, it's first person, which Fortnite doesn't currently offer. One more advantage that Call of Duty has, and this is a big one, is that Call of Duty has captured a really wide demographic of gamers. Because it's been around so long, there's people who are playing now who started in Call of Duty 4, or even longer ago than that. Because Call of Duty World War II returned us to boots on the ground, a lot of old Call of Duty players are returning to the game who maybe haven't touched it in the past few years. The whole marketing campaign for Call of Duty World War II was get your squad back together. Call of Duty and Activision are very well aware that they have that wide demographic. They have the young players, they have the older players, they have the players that have been with the series for years and years and years, 
And that's something that PUBG and Fortnite can't compete with. Somebody mentioned to me in a YouTube comment that Electronic Arts would probably do a pretty good job if they threw their hat into the ring in this battle royale genre, but they implemented it in Battlefield. And I agree with that, but that's why I think time is of the essence here. I, th I think that's why I've been able to piece together this narrative that this is happening fast. It's not happening like three years from now. I think this needs to happen right now because it's a time sensitive issue and PUBG and Fortnite are just blasting off right now. If Activision wants to do this, they need to do it as soon as possible. Otherwise they're going to get left in the dust. So I think uh, right now we've got a little bit of an arms race, maybe even between Activision and EA to see, you know, who can put together the best battle royale game. I wouldn't be surprised because of how big this is. And uh, I really stress how big it is in my other video that I mentioned to you guys earlier. So again, make sure you check out the first video I did on this, my previous video. I'll link it on the screen in just a moment here. But let me know, this outside of the headquarters area that I've been exploring for this video, does it seem to anybody else like it could be the early stages of a battle royale map being created? Of course, it looks totally unfinished. There's some textures that are low quality. There's some clipping and there's some issues with the way that buildings are attached to the ground and stuff like that every now and again. But there's buildings, there's trees, there's bunkers, there's I'm on a cement and brick structure right now. There's there's cover, there's like rubble and, and holes in the ground and stuff like that. What are they doing out here? Why is there so much detail outside of the map? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please take two seconds to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'll catch you with another video soon. Peace.